Hello, welcome to the show. My name is Rebecca Miruri Muluria. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Parenting Today. Now, it is estimated that 85% of adults have at some point struggled with self-confidence. On the show today, we are going to talk about building self-esteem and confidence uh, in your children and for your children. And that's what we are going to talk about here with a lovely couple. Uh, we have Cecilia Mwikani Oching on set and we have Gideon Oching on set. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. How many children are you raising? Let me start with you, Gideon. <laughs> and yes. how old are they? We are raising four children. Um, actually, one of them is an adult already, uh, a 20-year-old um, who is in college. And then we have a 17-year-old. We have an 11-year-old and a 4-year-old. Um, so that is who we are uh, right 20, now. 17, 11 and a four-year-old. That's correct. Wow, that's yeah. lovely. Yeah. You, you look so good for... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you both of you. <laughs> so let me, let me talk about that. You've had the statistics. Around 85% wow. of people, uh, adults, have struggled with self-esteem at some point. Me included. I'm going to tell you my story later. <laughs> I want to hear your story. Uh, did you ever at any point struggle with self-esteem? Um, personally, growing up, I did. Uh, because I grew up in a family of four also, and um, I think um, our time when you're growing up, we didn't have that part where your parents had you. Most of the time, they were there for you to listen to what they're telling you. You know, compared to this generation right now, you need to be able to listen to what the children are telling you. Yeah, so I think that's a very big gap because... Um, Communication was an issue during that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, compared to now this 20th century that you have to, to be there for your children. They need to listen to you. I mean, they need to, also you need to listen to them, to, them. to what they're trying to tell you. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so, parenting has really transformed over, over time. Yes, it has changed. I don't know, did you ever struggle with self-esteem at, at any point of your life? I, I must have. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, just, you know, where you grew up, mm -hmm. uh, comparing yourself with other kids, uh, mm -hmm. you know, probably they are doing much better off than you are doing, you think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you're walking to school and somebody else is, you know, being driven to school. So, yeah, I mean, these are, you know, part and parcel of uh, mm -hmm. growing up. So it was there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Uh, I grew up in the Rift Valley area. And uh, the water, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with the fluoride levels yeah. very high. So at some point, like I had streaks, brown streaks on my on my teeth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to become a journalist. Then you do not appear on TV. I don't know now, mm -hmm. but but you cannot appear on TV with with brown teeth. How? <laughs> or even streaks of you know. Yeah. So I remember wow. that brought my esteem really low. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I've had to work through life, like to just recover. Mm -hmm. As much as there was a lot of, of affirmation from my parents, but, but there was that, like you, you could not smile mm -hmm. in the class photos because you have this. I don't know, tell me about your children now. Um, having grown up like that and just uh, experienced that uh, probably the communication mm -hmm. with parents uh, was not um, what you would want translated to how you bring up your, your mm -hmm. children now. Um, how have you done that? And especially with your 21-year-old. I, mm -hmm. I like when I interview parents who have like uh, adult kids, mm -hmm. uh, the 20 year old sorry, adult kids, because at least they've seen the results of how they brought them up. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your 20-year-old. Um, I think, okay, her name is Gabby. Mm -hmm. She's 20, yes. Um, being present really helps a lot because I remember when I was growing up, my parents were not present, you know? So for, for us, for Gabby, who are present, who are there for her, you know? Um, every time uh, she comes home from school, we are there to receive her. When she has any functions in school, we make sure we attend the functions. You know, just being there really helped her a lot to know that we are there supporting her you know, when she was born and when she's, she was growing up, you know. And even right now when she's 20, we're still there for her because she needs that in her life, yeah. So being present is number one to help with the self-esteem of the child. Exactly. Yes. 
And what role yeah. do fathers play in, um, in bringing up a, a, a confident child? And especially girl child. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know so much about boys, but you're going to tell us about that mm. because you're bringing up boys too. What role does, the, does a father play in bringing up a confident girl child? I would say the three three things. Um, one is to love them. Um, mm -hmm. The other one is to be the authority figure in their lives, and um, and and then the other one is to be present. So love them, be the authority, and uh, be present. Mm -hmm. So loving them it means unconditional love, um, and in this case, mm -hmm. making sure that you listen to them, um, you play with them. Uh, it means you hang out with them, you are not embarrassed about them, mm -hmm. yeah. and you affirm them and their, their peers and, and, and really be their biggest champion. Exactly. And so when you do that as, as a father, uh, definitely you score some points with your kids and that boosts their, their, their self-esteem. Self You're really not embarrassed, embarrassed about them. Tell me about that part. <laughs> well... Your child is your child. They are very precious to you. Um, when they're given to you, when God gives that child to you, you have to love them with everything that they are. You know, they can be cheeky. They can do all these things. Um, so not embarrassing them is, you know, don't allow yourself to be caught up in comparison games. You know, like, oh, you're not like so and so. Yeah. So because when you bring that point up, Mm. It means they are less than, and so they don't. They are not deserving of your love unless they measure up to so and so. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very key that you don't compare them, yeah. because when you compare them, the message is, you know, I don't really, really matter before you. Wow. And and your child doesn't want to know that because according to them, you are their biggest hero, hero, and depending, you know, whether your mother or father. And so don't cross that line. Uh, don't compare them. Even with their own siblings, each child is very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, comparing mm -hmm. is is, mm -hmm. is really uh, a turn off for them. Mm -hmm. Tell me about affirmation and how you maybe deliberately. What are some of those? I want like very practical ways that 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 you used on your on your child, or maybe you used on your children mm -hmm. that uh, have worked. And and with the twenty year old now, mm -hmm. she's in college. Like you've seen it play play out right now mm -hmm. wherever she is? Uh, being real, being real and uh, just being very practical. And okay, for me, every time in the morning when, when she wakes up, I'll tell her, you know, you're the bright shining star, you know? So that when she goes there, she knows out there things are not really easy, especially right, right now that she's out there studying and to know that she can be anything she wants to be, you know, and also reminding her the, the, the roles we played when she was growing up. So just affirming them and reminding her that you can be anything you want to be. You know, you need to be confident. You need to, you need to speak out. Let your color not judge you. Because where she is, she is working with different, different generation, different um, races. races, yes. Mm -hmm. So just making her know that she can be anything she wants to be, you know? And just letting her know that she's a bright star and stars don't struggle to shine. So out there, just shine and go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and knowing that our parents are really um, supporting her and being there for her and saying being real is that um, I've, I sit down with her and talk about the struggles people go through, you know, even as a teenager mm -hmm. and now as an adult, you know, there are many struggles out there. And just talking to her about also relationships and... Um, the obstacles you might go through, you know, because we went through all those, you know, we are not perfect. So just her knowing that you can go through things, but you can, um, you can, you can make it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, because you are a conqueror. Just mentioning those those powerful words, yes, affirming words, affirming words. You know, it's it's unfortunate yeah. because so, sometimes uh, it's unfortunate that some parents yeah. would actually be the first people to speak very negatively to a child. So. Yeah. You know, where where we akuna uskizangi, where we njinga, ama I don't know. Like it can be very condescending for the for the Absolutely, kids. Yeah. What do you think is the effect of that? And I see it a lot. Like 
I, I experienced it. I, sometimes you're in a matatu, and mm. you know, like the way uh, young kids would get into a matatu. And they're there, and the conductor is like, Nini tokeni, songeni nyuma, fanyini. You're yeah. thinking, you're actually talking to children. Yeah. You're not talking to adults. If you were to talk the same way to an adult, they'd mm. feel so bad. Mm. But mm. why don't we even respect these children to know that if you talk to, to a child the same way, like mm. you're talking to a child, but it might have more effects than, than, than even an adult, because an adult can know how to deal with it. Mm. Tell me about that. Mm. How important is it to uh, address and respect a child and how does that now build up to them having a lot of confidence in themselves? Well, I think it's uh, it's true that um, that that the tongue has it's very powerful. What we say, um, our words are very very powerful in shaping up a young mind's life and and a future, mm. uh, and more so as a parent. So you know we can't control what goes out there, but. Uh, if you can, uh, you can control what comes out of you as a parent, because whatever you say um, actually has, you know, eternal sort of uh, repercussion. Because the child takes it very seriously. So if you call your child a sheep, um, <laughs> they end up behaving like one. Yeah. Uh, if you call them a champion. Uh, then mm -hmm. they will behave like a champion. Mm -hmm. So it's very important um, that we weigh and measure our words. Um, and more so from the perspective of who we are, what you went through. Mm -hmm. And so if there's anything that you hated being told, uh, then you must hate those things, uh, those words with passion, and not pass it on to your child. Mm -hmm. um, don't catch up yourself, uh, don't be caught up um, you know, telling your kids these words that really will bring them down. Yeah. Because it will, you know, it will. It has uh, the effect that, you know, you as a parent, they look up to you and they'll take your words seriously. Mm -hmm. So if you can tell your child these words, um, mm. if you call them bad names, then when they go outside, it's just, it's just going to be repeated and they will take it. <laughs> so, you know, bringing up uh, children <laughs> can be... Um, how do I put it? Like it can be quite a task, especially in these economic times. It and that's why you find yeah. parents. A lot of parents are frustrated. Yeah, in front of teacher, get away, talk up. I see what she does. You know, what not? Mm. They don't want to attend school meetings anymore. Mm. Um, how has that helped you now? Like being very present in mm. your in your children's lives, and maybe for parents who don't. Um, how do I put it? Like, who have to be at work? Mm -hmm. Or how do you balance that? Like, how do you mm -hmm. balance now uh, being the provider, for example, mm -hmm. or ensuring that your family has enough mm -hmm. versus bringing them up without them feeling the pressure that you're feeling as a parent? Mm -hmm. I think the main thing is being deliberate. I mean, being there for them. When, when, they, have, when they have those presentations, maybe let's say from even three um, PP1, PP2, or, you know, from that age, it's very, very important to be there, you know, because I know we parents, we, we are busy working, economy is hard, you know, and maybe I should have told you, you know, there's a presentation in school. So just showing up and your child being there doing a poem or singing and saying, oh, there, that's my dad, that's my mom, you know, the child will be like, will they really perform very well because they can see you, you know, and actually it plays a really big part and just being there for them and then seeing you, you know, being part of it. So one thing I want to uh, just say that what my husband was saying, the first thing, when, you're, when, when the child wakes up in the morning, before they leave the house, you know, you need to affirm him or her positively, you know. You are the head and not the tail, mm -hmm. you know. You're above and not beneath, they're going to make it. You know, whatever that comes along the way today, you're going to make it. Yeah. You know, so when someone is, makes you sad, you know, just be positive. Mm -hmm. Yet the powerful words you tell that child before the child steps out. Starts the day. Yes, makes, makes the day, a starts the day. Impact. You know, maybe a teacher might be very harsh. Maybe mm -hmm. the child's been having a hard day and the child might be rude or something. But what you told that child in the morning before the child leaves the mm -hmm. house, 
really makes the big day. Yes. Yes. Not the same to us. Kula la la la. Yes. <laughs> you know, even for us. Yeah. Even for us, before you step out, you know, you need to affirm yourself and say, today is going to be a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And my four-year-old, before he wakes up in the morning, when he wakes up in the morning, he says, oh, today is going to be a beautiful day. Wow. And that makes everything. I mean, it brightens up the room. Like, yes, what? changes everything, <laughs> you know. And yeah, it's going so, to be a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. I, I really so, love that. We're <laughs> going to take a very short break, after which we'll come and continue with this conversation on building self-esteem for your children. Welcome back. You're watching Parenting today. Today we are talking about self-esteem, instilling, building self-esteem and self-confidence in children. And on set is Gideon and Cecilia Ochin, who are sharing the experience bringing up their children. One is a 20-year-old, another is 17, another one is a pretty, that's 11, and another one is four. That's right. The four and the 11, you say, the boys. Mm -hmm. How different has it been uh, for you know raising the boys and raising the girls? Do we need extra extra effort for the girls? Because I think girls are the ones who are affected. But the, 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 the psychologists will tell us later whether girls yeah. suffer from uh, low self-esteem more than the boys. Uh, how has it been? I think it's been fun um, raising up kids, all of them. Uh, and I would say the gaps that are there for all between all our kids um, makes it um, or made it easier for us, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. raise each child individually. So I wouldn't say uh, boys uh, or girls. For me, it's just been raising up children, children. Uh, and one at a time. So Gabby had a time, we had Tamara in a time, Promise had, a uh, had his time, and now we have Josiah, um, you know, for a specific period of time, uh, which needs uh, more of an intense uh, focus, but each one of them uh, are still under the fold, and we're still, you know, raising them up. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe um, boys are different, but I wouldn't, you know, lump that together and say that's all boys. I say, mm -hmm. you know, each child that we've raised mm -hmm. um, have or has been raised up differently. Yes. And we continue to give them personalized attention because each child comes in as a package. Um, you know, they have a name, they have a character, mm -hmm. uh, they have a way that mm -hmm. they need to be responded to, um, to be affirmed, to be disciplined, yes. all that. It's very different and unique. So you can't just say it's for boys or for girls. Or for, but for it's, girls. Yeah, so it's like different. you have the common values that, that you instill in, yes. in all of them. Mm -hmm. For the boys, tell me yeah. about the boys and the role of fathers in, yeah. in bringing up boys. Yeah. Uh, I think of late we've, we've experienced a lot of adults who are wounded mm -hmm. and they've been wounded by their, and most of them are men, yeah. wounded by their fathers. Mm -hmm. You know, who never really affirmed them, who never really, um, what is it, like like acknowledged their presence in the, in the home, so to speak, Absolutely. or maybe expected so much higher, mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. higher expectations of them as opposed to the girls. Yeah. So as channel on a bebelezo, we've seen, we've watched a lot of videos, you yeah. know, as channel on a bebelezo, yeah. then the boys dangled and mm -hmm. whatnot. Tell me about that, bring up boys. For us, I think I go back to the same being individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so we have raised up our boys or the boys uh, that we're raising up currently mm -hmm. in, in the same way. Uh, the same expectation that um, you know, they would help in the house is the same expectation that we have for girls. Um, you know, taking care of their belongings in the same way that we do that. Um, the key that I've seen is um, just also following up on them the way the same way we would follow up on girls, um, because 
uh, you know, as a father, I would make sure that I know where all my girls are and at any yeah. given time. <laughs> what are they doing? Sometimes we, we assume that these kids can't see or they don't understand, mm. Mm. yet they observe a lot. They do. And they can tell, oh, so this is not mm. going right. This they is do. Not what. We always ignore that, or we can, most times, like, most parents would ignore that, ah, we don't know, like, they, don't, they don't understand what is going on. Mm. Now, uh, what are some of those things that you've done now as, um, you know, like, women? Mm -hmm. Sometimes how you'd want a girl to just grow up into, mm. like, this woman, young woman, like, like now you're, you're talking about your firstborn, Gabby. Mm. What are some of those practical things that, you, that you've done that you're so sure that when she's out there in college, she's, uh, she's now a, like a grown woman who can mm. make her own decisions. Mm. What are those things that give you that confidence that, that you're so sure that you instilled in her mm. as, a, as a girl that, that right now you think are working out for her? Um, I, think, uh, I think this one thing that you say that all, all of them in the house were the same. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were raised up the same level and and him cooking in the house really helped also the boys ah, to know that they cooks. can yes nice. cook he likes baking a lot so uh, he bakes and so i think that all of them seeing that dad is doing this this is not work only for ladies or for women or women don't belong in the kitchen you know because i think many times africans as we grow up women are the ones who do a lot of cooking and a lot of cleaning or anything like that you know mm -hmm. so uh for gabby she knows that um we've raised her the bar high you know that the man, the man in the, the, the man that the man in the house, the, the dad, was not like, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, it was not like um, it's only the mother who does everything in the house. Mm -hmm. So he knows that even the man should do something, mm -hmm. you know. So you're not less than because you're a woman, mm -hmm. you know. So even out there, he knows as a as a woman, as a girl, she knows that she's up there. She can do anything she wants to do, and um, she's. Um, She's very confident knowing that I'm not less than because I'm, I'm a lady or a woman or I'm black, you know? Because sometimes when you go there, there's a lot of stereotype, being a lady and being from this ethnic side, you know, of the life, yeah. So for her, is, um, I had time that I went out with her, taking out for dinner, for lunch, just talking to her, speaking positive things in her life and telling her that you can make it in life, and, and it's and okay to actually just take them out for days, yes. you know, like with, with your Have, children. Yes. In, insist, like, emphasize that. that yes. It's okay to actually take your children out mm -hmm. and just have meals. And not, and not all of them as a group. Yes, individual. Taking individual, you know, because all of them are different. All of them have different characters. All of them have different feelings, you know. Because when you look at Gabby and Samara, Gabby is 20, Samara is 17, they are totally very different. They're, they have different characters, you know. And... The one is like this, the other one is so you can't raise them the same the same way. Yeah. There's one who's more sensitive, there's one who does not need that lot of love, love, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, you will love them, but there's a way you bring one so close, one is a lot of attention, another one it's okay like that, you know? Okay. Yeah, just being there for them and listening to them and talking to them and just hearing what they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. Because many times we parents we talk a lot and we don't listen to what this girl is telling you, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that's why we fail as mothers. Yeah. We like telling them, blah, 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 you know, one, two, three, blah, 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 you know? And we don't listen to what they're telling us. Sometimes they may be telling you something, just the way they're acting out, mm -hmm. not even speaking it out, but you can tell, you know? There's this child who will keep on locking herself in the room. What's going on? You know, you need to stand up and go and find out what's happening to her. You know, sometimes uh, we find that her mother will let go and let the child just lock herself in the room as a teenager. But you need to reach out mm. and know what's going on. What's, how was your day, mm. you know? The children who are in boarding school, do you like keep on visiting them? If they don't have a phone, can you call the child and find out how is she or he doing, yeah. you know? Yeah, so just not um, leaving them. They've gone to boarding school and letting them just be, you mm -hmm. know? Just reaching out and knowing how uh, what, what, what has been happening in their life. And being a present, yeah. a being present, a present parent. Yes. Uh, so. Before we finish this, uh, mm -hmm. this session, I'd want, before we bring in the, the counseling psychologist, yeah. I'd want to talk about ki, ki here here. You know that word? Yeah. Oh. That is used a lot. <laughs> you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. most of the times, mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. uh, when I was growing mm -hmm. up, 
we were brought down because of the word kihera hera. Mm. Like a, ch- a child would come mm. in, say, in this room, and they want to check out this fireplace. Mm. They want to run, you know, they want to see what is behind the curtains. And then, you know, to pigwa, like, mm. you beaten up, like, that is kihera hera. Mm. And pole pole, like, very slowly, yeah. the child just starts to, you know, what, you're closing, mm. you're scared, you're, mm. you're doing all that. Have you, did you experience, and what, what do you do with your children? And especially the four-year-old now, mm. I'm sure maybe he's, he, he can be all over, like he's trying to explore and all that. How have you, how has that now played out? And, I, and what is that thin line between kiherehere and bringing up a confident child? Let me mm. ask that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I started by pointing out to the, four thi- the three things that we do. So loving, mm-hmm. authority, and presence. Big presence, mm. yes. Yeah. So loving them means you actually accommodate them uh, in their, you know, childhood uh, behavior. So yes, they can be, you know, exploring and all that, and, and they're allowed to explore because, you know, your child is not thinking at the same level as you. So um, one of the mistakes that we do is, you know, we try to be, everything needs to be clean and pretty and all that. So, you know, before the visitors show up, Everything needs to be neat and all that. But, you know, if you visit any family where there are kids, you know very quickly that that house will be chaotic. Um, unless you are running a tight ship with a military sort of compound <laughs> where everything needs to be, then it actually defeats the purpose of having a family. Whoa. Um, so how do we deal with that? I, I think we, we allow our kids to be who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a time to play. We have toys so that the kids can play with them. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's not to decorate the house. So it means there's a time that the house will be messy, but then the responsibility demands that you pick up your toys and keep them once you're done. Uh, and so that's part of the discipline. It means you're exploring things. Um, mm-hmm. Things are bound to break, um, you know, they can be excited and they take glass and they break it, and that is okay. In fact, we have had this issue with my wife where she literally <laughs> takes a glass and gives the child to walk across the room with it. And you know, for the longest time I didn't understand, but now I do. Because that is part of building their confidence. Mm. And uh, oh, yeah, you like, know, there's a couple that yeah, told me they that they, do they give they serve their children in, in exactly. glass mm. yes. where, mm. you know, like they don't they don't Absolutely. use plastics. Yes, mm. so because they want to build that confidence. Yeah, so our kids would clear up the table as young as uh, three, and they'll be given the glass to take to the kitchen sink, mm. and it's okay, <laughs> absolutely. Mm. So you don't go on screaming and yeah, thinking like, because then, because yeah, mm. when are they gonna be able to do this? Mm. So we trust kids to do these tasks, mm. and they quickly learn that there are things that we need to be responsible with. Mm-hmm. There are things that you can be a little bit careless with, but it's okay when you mess, uh, because that is part of growing up. Uh, that is part of being you know, a child, and that's part of being this family. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, if you can't touch, mm-hmm. uh, then really don't belong. Yeah. And mm-hmm. every child wants to know that this is their family, yeah. this is my mother, this mm-hmm. is my father, this is my home. Yes. And you can only do that in, in, in the space whereby they're allowed to be themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing those insights. Right now, I want to bring in a psychologist, mm. Grace Kinothia, who's going to shed more light into this conversation after this very short break. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching Parenting Today. Today we're talking about uh, self-confidence, building your child's self-esteem. 
and on set is Gideon and Cecilia Ocheng, who have been sharing their journey raising their four children. And right now we've been joined by a psychologist. Her name is Grace Kinuthia. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Are there overconfident kids? How are we measuring that up? What's the bar? Like when you say somebody is overconfident, you're comparing them to who or to what? Like do we have a scale measure wherever you say, when you go past this stage, you're overconfident. When you go below this stage, you're not confident. I think people can just be confident without necessary being measured up. Mm -hmm. All these, that's whether you say, oh, you're able to achieve this, this means you believe in yourself or you're confident enough to do this. Then there's the other part whereby you can say, you're not able to do this, maybe we just need to build up your confidence a little bit more. But now when you start saying overconfidence, it means when something is over and above, we are, we are going to suppress it, which might not work. Yeah. You know how important it is to just have uh, parents know how to bring up confident children? What do you measure? Let me say that. Like, how, how can you tell that this child is confident? Is it by how much they can, uh, they can probably perform at school, uh, in school uh, concerts or uh, stand in front of people and be able to just recite their poems or what? Like, how do you measure confidence in children? I think it still goes back to the child. What would the child want to achieve? So for example, the child would like to dance in front of people, then they are not able to. This is not what would I want my child to achieve. It's mm -hmm. not a youth thing, it's more of a child thing. So whereby the child is like, I wish I could dance like this, or I'd like to do this. You know, whereby you ask, would you want to do this? And they're like, yes, I mm -hmm. would want. But I'm afraid I can't do it because I'm standing in front of many people. Or oh, I'm scared, I don't feel good enough. Then that's the part you like. Okay, the confidence bit could be an issue. Mm -hmm. But I think we measure it the other way around. Whereby, uh, why is my child not running about like this other kid? Why is mm -hmm. my child not talking in front of people? But do they want to? Uh -huh. That's the question. Because it's also like it boils down to the child's personality. Yes. Uh, another thing that I would ask, how, how does, you know, like we, we, like early on on the show, we spoke about 85% of adults having struggled with, with self-esteem, self-confidence issues at some point in their life. Uh, how does that affect now how you parent uh, your, your child as a, as a parent? Okay, they good or, is it the good news or the bad news? We learn these things from zero months. Like day one, once the child is born, this is when they start learning things like trust. Mm -hmm. So you find how the caregiver or the parent started perceiving this child, how they brought them up, is what's going to translate into their adulthood. Mm -hmm. So from about zero to 15 years, this is where they're learning self-confidence, this is where they're learning to take initiative, this is when they're learning, I think, 18 months to three years, this is when they're learning shame, guilt, doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you find that if they are mishandled, even something simple as potty training, how do you, even when kids are running around and you're telling them, no, stop, don't do this, you know, you're trying to show them you can do it, you always get it wrong. So in all those processes is when people learn confidence. If you, you're not allowed to experiment, if you're not allowed to air out your opinion, if you're not guided the right way. So this way you find, we call them ACEs most of the time, adverse childhood experiences. So whatever happens in between that period mm -hmm. is what now is projected in our adulthood. So you're telling somebody, learn how to trust, and they're like, how, and I've been rejected mm -hmm. all my life. Uh, you need to, in the workplace, you're telling somebody, you need to work this or do this. And then like everything I ever tried all my life, I was mm -hmm. told I'm not good enough. I was compared to my cousins or my siblings. Mm. So it starts from zero all the way to now as growing. I really mm. like that. Gideon mm -hmm. and um, Cecilia, might you have any questions or comments about what she's talking about? Gideon? Well, I, I think you have really pointed out something that is, is, is key in terms of... Um, you know, the, the parenting, you know, just mm -hmm. having, looking inside and not projecting that on your, your, your children, children. In, in the way that you raise them up. Because if you mm -hmm. don't deal up with your issues, then it's, it's most likely able to pass on to your child. But knowing that, I think you can make your child's work easier by trying to avoid the same mistakes uh, so that they have to, as in, in your words, to reparent themselves in the future. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's very, very key um, that, that we pay attention to that. 
Um, but while doing that, I think it's also very important that we do not uh, get to the point whereby we are afraid to parent our children because of our own mistakes. Yes. Because if there are certain things that you, you did mm -hmm. um, or, were, or happened to you and somehow you're so much afraid of them, it's likely that you may neglect that area of your life and not do it right mm. um, by not insisting on certain things um, with your child. Or sometimes I've found even parents who are afraid to do things um, or correct their kids because they're going to harm them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you go overboard. You, you baby, you overcompensate. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. so <laughs> you find that uh, you miss the point altogether. And exactly what you went through, your child is going to go through them because uh, you did not know yourself enough to self to correct that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you is that correct? About that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially mm -hmm. the overcompensation. I think yes. that's what this generation is doing mostly, mm -hmm. overcompensation. Mm -hmm. yes. I grew mm -hmm. up in poverty. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make sure my yeah. kids will never lack mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. but then again we lack to pause and see yes i lack this what else did i have yeah. i had a parent to go back home to uh -huh. i had a parent maybe i had a community i had mm -hmm. this so we tend to get one miss out on the other yeah. so it's a cycle mm -hmm. so maybe when the kids grow up they'll be like no i want to go look for this money mm -hmm. i need to be there for the kids and maybe mm -hmm. it's a whole so you find that it's a generation one trying to heal then the mm -hmm. other person it's is trying to do the, it's a whole cycle mm -hmm. yeah. and then you build and what kind of adults uh, are born out of uh, you know like being raised properly or maybe being encouraged to be confident Tell me about the adults that would come from such a home and maybe from a home that, that uh, doesn't really uh, affirm the child and what kind of adults does that create? They say 50% of the population is secure. So it means 50% of the population is okay. Just mm. that maybe we over-project or overshow the mm. those who are not good enough, those who have this trust issues, insecurities, etc. So you find that most people would be able to communicate. I know people say, especially when it comes to men, people say mm. men can't communicate. But weirdly enough, 50% of the men are able to mm -hmm. communicate or express their feelings. Mm. So you find that once you've grown up in a place whereby these values were instilled, you find there's a balance, work-life balance, parenting bal uh, life balance. You're able to learn, go back to who am I? What do I want to achieve? Like go back to your journey map. This is what I'm looking into and necessary. It doesn't, your journey doesn't have to be yours. If you're rushing ahead, that's okay, good, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And you're okay with that. Then goes back to we adults who are not resentful or what they'd say envious because somebody, if somebody is sharing, yes, I bought a plane, you don't have to feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. It's their success. Mm -hmm. But now the other side of that is whereby the triggers. How did you grow up? If you tried sharing and saying these are good moments, every, maybe there's ridicule, somebody would try to look at what you're not doing enough. If you try to talk and somebody's like, oh, you talk too much and you're silenced. <laughs> if you're trying to maybe explore and do something and somebody's like, do you have always to keep jumping? Mm -hmm. And then maybe it's the generation whereby parents were busy and you're like, I'm busy, I'll talk to you later. You see this, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. lack of achievement. Actually, that generation, oh God, like, you know, you're mentioning some things, <laughs> I'm like, am I? <laughs> yeah. Am I? yeah. Lack of basic things as attunement. A child could be sat there, but you don't notice. Mm -hmm. You find that in most teenagers, they are suicidal, but their parents won't even notice. When the child maybe has gone to, maybe t t taken drugs and they're back like, what did I miss out? What didn't I do? But they were there with that child. Mm -hmm. So they missed out the whole cycle. They missed out even the sadness. Sometimes we just look at somebody and say, I don't think today you're okay. So you find now that's the flip side. Because maybe you are busy with other things, you're not able to be even present. Mm -hmm. Because either you're compensating, either you mm. have your own things going on, and these things become a cycle. Once you miss one step, it, it's like projects into something else. So it's a ripple effect towards everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions for her? Yeah, I like what you've spoken about trust. So trust begins from birth. Uh, yeah, trust is built <coughs> from... From the zero to about that's 18 from months. birth, from the yeah, time from the child birth, is born. Yeah. So you need to build trust from the beginning. Yes, because if the child is, doesn't feel trusted, they can lose it. Yes, and that can affect later in future. Yes, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. 
Thank you so much, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, for being on the show today. Mm. We've learned so much about uh, building self-confidence in children. And uh, I hope we can have this conversation some other time because I feel like there's so much that we still need to, <laughs> to talk about, yeah, and especially yeah, on, on parenting style, <laughs> like being able to... Uh, you were talking about how parents might also be the ones now dealing with the self-esteem issue. Mm. And no. how that projects now to parents to deal with self esteem issues. It's not a by the way, they it's do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I want to have that conversation some sometime later. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show today, ladies and gents. Uh, it's been exciting just talking about building self confidence in, in children. Uh, we've had Cecilia and Gideon Ochieng and we also had Grace Kinoti, a psychologist, on set today talking about building self confidence in, in children. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very important topic because they, it informs uh, uh, what they become in future, or who the kind of people they become in future. We are at the Fairview Hotel uh, in Upper Hill, Nairobi. Thank you so much for watching today's show. My name is Rebecca Mirori Mulure.